Hello everyone. I'm Shekhar from Momentum Lab and welcome to our channel. So as promised in the last video, uh, I'd said that I'll be showing you the calculations of adaptive asset allocation and uh, I'll be sharing the calculations today. And you can also see the uh, detailed Google sheet in the uh, YouTube description. But before I share the calculations, I would like to um, share the approach that we have been following so far in our channel. So the main purpose of our channel is to uh, educate, especially on the quant uh, side of investing. But in such a fashion that it is practical and uh, as well as informative. Now, how do we combine these two practicality and um, uh, ensuring that the learning also happens? Like most of the times we see uh, videos by many influencers. Uh, when you see it for the first time, you'll get a kick, you get excited. And after some time, it dies down. So let's say you are in the initial stage. You see something which is interesting. You feel that it improves your skill. And uh, once you feel that uh, you have acquired something and there's no follow up and after that it quickly dies down again, you're back to the same stage. Whereas what we are trying to do is we want to show you or, uh, uh, or provide latest insights or improve your skill and at the same time, ensure that we also are pushing you, pushing you to take up the next challenge or do it yourself, open the Google sheets or open a Python, uh, uh, Google collab code and try it out, try it yourself so that we are pushing the skill as well as trying to, uh, push your challenge give you a challenge so that you're not in the boredom stage or not in the anxiety stage, but in the flow. And only once you're in flow, you actually end up uh, mastering any skill. So that's our uh, core philosophy. And that's what we have been trying to do. If you consume a lot of content, uh, at some point of time, you'll feel boredom. You'll see that you have acquired a lot of knowledge, but actually it doesn't translate to anything meaningful. But if you've given, a, you've been uh, thrown a challenge, uh, which is of high complexity and you do not know uh, enough requisite um, knowledge about that uh, topic, then you'll feel anxious. Like, what am I doing? Uh, a fine balance is required. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, I'll just show how did we connect this to, um, how did we connect this to what we've been preaching so far. If you see, we started with a um, absolute momentum strategy, which is nothing but a simple trend overlay. Let's say we've taken an index of Nifty and we've applied some trend filters of uh, 200 EM EMA. If uh, the Nifty is about 200 EMA, we go long. If it is below, we hold. There's no shorting, we just hold. And how does this trend overlay work? So that has been the absolute uh, momentum strategy. I'll put all the strategies that we have discussed so far in the uh, YouTube description so that you can click and watch those videos. So the, we started with that, the absolute momentum or simply trend following strategy. Then uh, we added some more complexity. We introduced two assets. So earlier we only took Nifty and checked whether it was long or not. Now we checked uh, Nifty alongside with gold within Nifty and gold, which one is in uptrend? And if both are in uptrend, which of the two is doing better? And we invest only in that asset. So that is dual momentum uh, made famous by uh, Gary Antonacci. And uh, following the book, we have shown how the calculations are done in the Google sheet. And that's the dual momentum. It obviously we try to compare each strategy with respect to Nifty 50, the base index, because we, all, we usually do uh, the Analysis on Nifty 50. For simplicity's sake, you can choose whatever index that you want, maybe Nifty 200 momentum 30 or Nifty 100 lower 30, your choice, but we simply uh, take Nifty 50. So we show how absolute momentum does well, better than Nifty 50. It doesn't improve the overall returns, but it minimizes the drawdown. And in fact, it actually takes a beating on the returns also, the absolute momentum strategy. Then we showed the dual momentum. Dual momentum maintains the same returns as Nifty 50, but reduces the drawdown by half. Then we showed a uh, multi-asset momentum. What if we take not just two assets, but more than two, let's say five, six, or 10. This we have shown with the help of uh, multi-factor, uh, factor rotation strategy. So let's say we have five or six different factors. And if we were to run a momentum strategy on top of factors, how does it perform? So that is an explanation of multi-asset uh, momentum. So this is the third level of uh, complexity. And next is what we are showing right now. Uh, that is adaptive asset allocation. The calculations, I have not been shown, but the uh, overall concept and its uh, performance have been shown in the previous video. So in adaptive asset allocation, what we do is we uh, not just take multiple assets and a momentum strategy. And uh, usually we allocate equally, right? But we don't allocate equally among these strategies. We allocate based on their uh, volatility, based on their past volatility. And we do a risk parity. That is, we do one, uh, one divided by the standard deviation and see which asset is having uh, least volatility and then allocate uh, among them. So that's the next level of complexity called as adaptive asset allocation. So this performs well on both counts. It improves the returns as well as the uh, drawdowns are minimized. Then the next set of complexities are what if we run a momentum strategy on 
a portfolio of stocks let's say a 50 uh, stocks of nifty 50 or maybe nifty 100 nifty 500 then google shade won't suffice now this is the cut off point at which we'll have to move away from uh, google sheets to python now this is also we have shown in uh, one of our videos of how do you construct a momentum portfolio based on um, uh, based on a universe of stocks by the way this is not back testing we just showed how do you screen if you are interested in back testing this will require uh, even more level of complexity that is you need a uh, subversive bias free data so that's the final level of where you uh, have uh, historical inclusion and exclusions of the stocks in various indices and then you do a back test of momentum strategy um, that's the final uh, pinnacle of uh, constructing or back testing any momentum strategy and then you can add even more or layers on top of it where you can do asset level first and then you can do stock level uh, next but this is the progression i think we have covered uh, at least till this stage of what the maximum utilization of google sheets or excel so without any further ado let's jump into the uh, calculations so let's take a recap of what adaptive asset allocation was adaptive asset allocation had four assets gold nifty uh, nasdaq 100 represented by mon 100 motilal oswal nasdaq 100 and aditya birla um, uh, sun life liquid uh, fund because this uh, liquid fund was in inception since long time so we chose this instead of liquid bees you can choose any uh, liquid parameter and none of this is recommendations and by the way we are not severe registered advisors nor uh, ris it is only for information and education purposes the data that we are showing is also of more than 3 months old uh, so it starts from 2014 and ends till 2024 december Uh, not december 2024 uh, october so the more than 3 months of data uh, is omitted uh, for based on the sebi guidelines all right so initially we chosen uh, five assets that is nifty b junior b gold uh, nasdaq 100 and uh, liquid and we've shown that a universe which comprises of uh, high correlated assets don't do well so we omitted uh, junior b's and took these four so think of it like if you are having uh, a football team of only um let's say forwards then uh, it's not a, a good game because you will be scoring well and uh, at the same time you'll also be losing a lot of points the overall match might have a high scoring it might be high scoring game like 5-5 or 10-10 but at the end of the uh, game you might not actually win it might be a draw or you might lose it might have a lot of fireworks in, in that 90 minutes but at the end of the day you will feel that what have we done so a good a good a uh, way to construct the universe is to have enough dispersion of returns within the universe so that's what we try to do by checking the correlations of different assets within the universe so that you have a good team of forwards and then you have good defense and good uh, middle so that uh, you are not only playing playing your front foot or playing aggressively but when the time comes for uh, saving uh, protecting your the goals you, know, you also have a good defense team so that does the job well so that's what we did of uh, in, in adaptive asset allocation to say in nutshell now what we what we usually do is the, i do a, remonth, a monthly rebalance to check monthly rebalance i need to first calculate the returns of each of these assets on a monthly basis now why do i de- why do i do on a monthly basis is because uh, one it is called as parameter sensitivity analysis and then you can rebalance every day every week every month once in 3 months 6 months 12 months so there is one sweet spot that you need to identify which is uh, optimal so in this particular calculation i am not defining what is that sweet spot it is for you to uh, try out and test out different uh, uh, different variations but for the objective of this video is to mostly show how the calculation is done so i've taken a monthly rebalance so what i do i first calculate monthly returns of each of these assets uh, gold be nifty mon and sbl now once i calculate the monthly returns then i calculate the six month returns again you might ask why did you, why did i take six month why not 12 month or nine month or average of 6 and 12 as i mentioned the objective is not to identify or optimize this strategy but to show you the calculation so you get a taste of how this is done and then you can optimize it further so i've taken 6 month returns to calculate the momentum ranking of each of these assets now i rank these four assets based on the past 6 months highest returns gets the first rank so in the month of december 2024 nasdaq 100 had a highest returns so it was given 1 and nifty bees was second so it was given rank 2 liquid was given uh, rank 3 based on the returns and gold fourth because it had minus 5.49 returns so how am i calculating the returns or the ranks it is simply the function equal to rank i select the entire range um and i fix it i want to see the rank of a particular cell within that range comma the entire range selection comma 0 basically it, uh, it says either it is ascending or descending 0 comma 1 so that way i get the ranks of these 
assets now just uh, drag down so this if you just observe the columns m to q this will tell you how the momentum is shifting or what kind of uh, asset picks are we doing as the time progresses so you can see that uh, initially for the first uh, one two years uh, nasdaq 100 stayed predominantly in the top positions followed by nifty and sometimes liquid and then again it switched to gold and nifty and uh, after some time it again switched back to nasdaq 100 for considerable years from 2016 to 2020 uh, 2018 and followed by nifty and then again it flipped in between to gold and uh, liquids the, whenever you see the gold and liquid coming these are the times of uh, turbulence that usually the strategy automatically moves to gold and liquid again once the turbulence goes away it moves to high performing assets in this case it is uh, more 100 and gold so that's how the rankings shift uh, between uh, the assets and you can see you can visualize i'll show the visualization also now if it were a normal strategy of allocating equally between the top two assets that would have been uh, called as multi asset momentum strategy but we are doing something different here we are actually allocating not equal weightages but dynamic allocation based on their volatility so a stock which is exhibiting or an asset which is exhibiting highest volatility should get lowest allocation even though we pick top two amongst four now these two are not equal we see the volatility of these two and allocate less to high volatile asset more to low volatile asset thereby doing the risk parity now how do we ensure that this happens or to do that what i can do is i calculate the six months volatility just nothing but the standard deviation of uh, the previous six months uh, returns and then i calculate inverse volatility weight which is nothing but one by v9 which is let's say what is V9? This is for gold bees. The standard deviation has been 2%. Now, how do I calculate the standard deviation? It is simply is equal to stdev.s uh, sample. Now, you want to do a population or sample is your choice. But irrespective of that, it gets nullified. The reason being, the way I'm calculating the weightage is, the formula is uh, 1 by sigma 1 whole divided by summation of 1 by sigma 1 plus 1 by sigma 2 plus 1 by sigma 3 plus 1 by sigma 4. Now, why am I doing like this? If I do a weightage allocation of sigma 1 divided by sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 plus sigma 4, which is standard deviations, then what happens is that I'm actually allocating more to more riskier weights, which is not the intention that I have. So, and hence, that's the reason I'm calculating 1 by sigma 1, which is inverse the volatility. Now, once I calculate the inverse volatility, let's see the weights or the scores of uh, 1 by sigma 1 for each asset. You see such unusually high number for liquid because it is least volatile. It is disproportionately higher than the other assets. Let's say the 1 by sigma 1 of gold, nifty, mon 100, they are in the ranges of 30, 40, 50. But this is 20, 30, 40 times of these assets. So if you see, whenever a liquid, a liquid uh, asset comes in the top two rank, it automatically occupies the highest allocation weightage. You know, that's what is reflected in the weightages. So you see, whenever we get a one, a signal that liquid base is in top two, the weightage skews heavily towards liquid base. It, it takes up 98, 99% and a minuscule gets allocated to the remaining assets. And this is the reason actually the strategy protects the downside. And whenever it moves away from one, let's say it goes to zero. No? Let's see what happens here in these scenarios. The moment it is out uh, of the top two picks, then it is a proper allocation, meaning, meaning that uh, there's a tough fight between these assets because these assets are more or less similarly volatile assets. Uh, NASDAQ, gold, Nifty B. Yeah, within these three, there may be differences, but when you combine or when you cal when you see, compare these three together versus liquid, and these three are definitely in a similar range. So the allocation is more fluidic. Once it is moved towards uh, no, no, move towards Nifty, Nasdaq, or Gold. So let me show a visualization of how this uh, uh, translates. I've just used ChatGPT to do this calculation. So this is start from 2014, the zero, basically x-axis, and uh, the end is still 2024. Liquid is in red color, ASBL. So the moment there's turbulence in the markets, it completely comes and occupies. So your portfolio actually goes into a shell. It protects the portfolio from any shocks and once it feels that the strategy that now it is time to go back to markets the shell automatically uh, disappears and you are again into the markets and when you, when the markets are again volatile it goes uh, completely into a shell 
and uh, you see when it is not uh, volatile then uh, it is pretty equally transient between gold nasdaq and uh, nifty the advantage of this is that unlike the door momentum where you have to do a complete binary switch 0 to 1 either you are in gold or nifty when nothing is performing you go to liquid but it is not like that it is fluidic so that's the reason you see this smooth transitions happening uh, let's say during this phase of uh, 2016 uh, to 2020 i think uh, there has been a predominance of nasdaq 100 and then in between there was switch between gold and nifty and again during covid crash we again went reclusive uh, it went into liquid and then slowly we started moving to gold first uh, after post covid crash and slowly then we moved from gold to nasdaq and from again the gold also completely switched over to nifty when the markets were completely uh, in an uptrend and we stayed in uh, nasdaq and nifty so this is how the uh, transitions have happened in the strategy let's see the nav to get the uh, feel of this smoothness you see this absolutely near straight line when the markets are turbulent even during this uh, 2020 times or 2018 times it goes into a, a very small slope of an uptrend because of liquid and whenever the markets are uh, proper it again picks up and starts from there and and hence the drawdowns are also pretty uh, good you, at any point of time it never, it was never more than 10% but uh, having said that i should tell that I, when i did a, a try out this strategy uh, i had to stop it now since uh, i okay now but the reason i have to stop it i told in the previous video also because mon 100 is no more investable and hence this strategy goes for a toss <coughs> but if at all if you are able to identify such uncorrelated assets then you know the logic the calculations are there all you need to do is figure out try out yourself and see which is the right recipe for you uh, this is about the uh, adaptive asset allocation calculations i'll provide the sheet in the youtube description and all the different strategies are also i think mentioned in one of my google sheet which is there in the um, uh, in the tools free tools that we provide on our website so i'm not going to provide individual google sheets in the uh, youtube description but the link one singular link you go to that link and you'll find all the sheets for all the calculations that i've shown so far all right now let me come back to the limitations of this uh, uh, strategy the first limitation is i have not considered the transaction costs so that will again eat up some of your nav the second thing is that i have not considered the uh, ltcg and stcg this is done mostly to see if the strategy makes sense at a high level and then if you want you can add a certain layers of uh, tax considerations to uh, get the fine tuned values the third thing is that not all assets are investable especially the mon 100 fourth the open price that you're going to buy may not be the same as what is reflected let's say i get a signal yesterday end of the day what i do i go and uh, say that i'll purchase next day morning the open price which is not true sometimes i may not get the price at opening um, so there there will be variations or changes between the price of what the strategy throws versus what actually happens in the uh, reality so these are some of the limitations and if you are playing with a uh, not playing actually if you're investing with the higher amounts then there can be some impact cost as well so please bear in mind all these um, limitations but having said that you get a base understanding of how this strategy is going to perform on top of it you can always refine so trying to optimize per, for perform, perfection is also not good thing we'll try at least get 75 80% correct and then from there we'll apply our own intuition uh, sense what it feels like and then we take a call so that's what even we believe uh, at least get 80% correct and then rest 20% uh, believe on the intuition all right guys i think this has been the video that many of you have been asking uh, really thankful for your responses um have a nice day bye